What's going on you guys? Paul here with Paul's Performance and on today's video we're going to be doing a oil change and fuel filter change on this 2019 Ford F-350. But it's not just any regular oil change. This truck has a no limit lower oil pan on it which means it has a higher capacity. So we are going to show you how to do that. It's not too much different but it does require a little bit more oil. Let's get it lifted and let's get started. <laughs> Right, guys so first uh, we got it mounted up on the lift I know not everyone has a lift but we do so we're gonna use that but the uh, first step I like to do is unscrew the oil cap just to let the oil flow a lot easier once you pull out the drain plug and a very crucial step right after that is to make sure that you cover the entire engine bay in dust that way that gets into the engine oil it'll help with the lubrication system and we'll really just smoothen out anything that has any roughness inside the motor all right, don't actually do that. It is best to have a clean engine bay whenever you take off your oil cap. That way you risk any contamination of dust or dirt or anything like that. We wanted to make a joke because of how dirty the truck is. Wonder how it got that way. So we got the truck up in the air. We're going to start with changing the oil. So we have here, as you can see, this nice shiny lower oil pan. This is a no limit brand oil pan. Basically the same as uh, any other oil pan. It's got a drain plug right here in the very bottom that uses a 14 millimeter Allen bolt, which we have mounted right here on our long ratchet. And then we have our oil filter right here in which we will remove with just a regular oil filter wrench. So we're gonna go ahead and get the plug removed and get the oil draining, and then we're gonna get the oil filter off and let that drain, and then we'll move to the lower fuel filter once uh, we got those two drained out. So I'm gonna get that off, and then we'll be right back. All right guys, so we got the drain plug out of the No Limit oil pan. This is obviously not stock, this is the No Limit. It has the 14 millimeter Allen. It is also magnetic, so it will pick up any metal flakes that uh, is in your oil. And as you can see, this one is clean because it is not a Duramax. We're gonna get this uh, wiped off and we're gonna inspect this uh, O-ring it has on it. As you can see, we have just a regular o-ring on it i would advise putting a new one on it every time this is the first time we've changed it out we're going to inspect it and see if we need to replace this but after that i'd probably just order you a couple if you get them from no limit i'd probably just order you a couple of them and change them every time for this time like i said i have an o-ring kit so if we need to replace it we will if not like i said being it's the first one it actually looks pretty good so i don't think we're going to have to replace it this time now what we're going to do is we're going to get the oil filter off and let that drain and once it's drained we'll put all this back on there and move on to the lower fuel filter before we drop the truck back down so we got our oil filter removed and drained we have our oil pan completely drained so now we're going to be installing a new oil filter and putting our drain plug back in we have a rotella filter here because we cannot find motorcraft i guess they're gold these days i'm surprised we even got motorcraft oil so we're going to put this rotella filter it's probably just as good if not the exact same filter on so make sure you get you some engine oil put it on the o-ring clean your uh, filter surface and make sure that the old o-ring is not stuck there because you don't want to double o-ring it if you do you'll know very quickly when all your oil is on the ground we got some oil on our o-ring here we're going to spin it up by hand and tighten it up do make sure that you put lots of fully fingerprints all over it so that it looks like somebody done some work on it you definitely don't want this to be clean we got our new uh, oil filter installed and full of oil we got our drain plug installed and ready for the dyno juice to be dumped in before we lower the truck and do that we're going to go ahead and change out our lower fuel filter on this truck this 19 it has this uh, newer style square fuel filter assembly down here this is actually my first one with this style i've only had the six sevens that had the circular filter that was mounted up a little bit further this one's really not that uh any more difficult but you have your drain here which is water and fuel drain if you take this off first and let it start draining it will probably siphon your entire fuel tank out you might get lucky but i know on the earlier versions uh if you took the drain and let it loose it would just keep draining and pull a siphon from your fuel tank. So what I like to do 
is I will open this drain up and I'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and take these bolts out, which will drop it down and it'll usually stop draining after that. As soon as I loosened up these five, eight millimeters, the actual fuel cap dropped down. It only drained for a couple more seconds and now it's stopped. So we can fully unbolt that and get it out and get this new filter installed. So let's see what it looks like. All right, so we're gonna drop that out of there. And there you can see, we're gonna go ahead and drop our Milwaukee there. I'm gonna close the valve so I don't drain anything else out. We're gonna go over to the bench. If this is your first time, I would suggest leaving it together like this. That way you install the, the new filter the same. It does tell you install, remove on uh, how to get it out. It's not just gonna pull out, as you can see which it has install this way, remove that way. So what you're gonna do, we're gonna remove it. So we're gonna slide it that way. And now it's gonna come right up out of there. And as you can see, it's got these tabs on it that hold it into place. We don't need that anymore. And the new kit will come with, you guessed it, a fuel filter, a new O-ring. You have your upper fuel filter. We'll do once we drop it down. And we have some clips that will go to the upper fuel filter as well. So we're gonna leave those in the box. We're gonna get our O-ring. There's our O-ring. We're gonna install the new O-ring. We're also gonna inspect the bottom here and look for if it's real dirty. And we can see we got some grit in there. So we're gonna get this dumped out and we're gonna clean this, this bottom half right here before we put it back in the truck. There's a little bit of grit in the bottom of it, which tells me, I mean, it's doing its job. It's not in, it's not in the motor, so. We're doing good. We're gonna dump that out. So I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna get this filter popped back in there. Once I have that clean, we have our ring installed and we're gonna reinstall it back onto the truck. We got our lower fuel filter installed, our oil drain plug and new filters installed there. So we are complete with the underside of the truck. Now we need to lower down and do the under hood activities. So let's get under the hood. We're under the hood now. We're gonna get this uh, fuel filter changed out. We're gonna fill her back up with oil. First step is you're gonna wanna crawl up under the hood since they have this great bumper on the front here. Crawl it up in here and we're gonna get in this position and uh, pray that this job will be over soon. Once we get done with that, we're gonna unhook these fuel lines. <laughs> Yep, that was actually a step I've missed. You need to make sure you, you throw the fuel cap uh, down into the engine bay and make sure it doesn't hit the ground because you don't want to find that. We can uh, get right here to this first fuel line. So we got three different fuel lines coming into here and each one of them has a special connector on it. So they don't want to make them all the same because that would be too simple. Even though they're different sizes and you, you really can't put them into the wrong spot, but they wanted to make sure that the regular person couldn't figure all these out very quickly. So you squeeze her on both sides and boom, she's off. There's one. I'm gonna slide that out of the way. That should come right off. Squeeze that. And there we go. So now we're gonna dump a bunch of fuel on the floor. Now this filter kind of spins into there. Um, as you can see, I'm gonna spin it all the way to the left and I'm gonna pull it out. <laughs> Now some of these have a tensioner that'll actually tighten up against this. I don't think this model has it, it just spins. So you'll spin it all the way to the left and uh, pick it up. And then when you put the new one in, you'll put the new one in and spin it back like that. So when you slide the new filter in, it's not gonna drop down until it catches that groove. So we're gonna find that groove and now you can see it's all dropped all the way down. Once you drop it all the way down, you'll turn it until it stops. And then once it stops, you can install your lines back on to your new filter and close all the locks. We got all these on and all the locks are back closed. So we are done with that second fuel filter. Now we are gonna have to prime it, but we'll do that here in just a little bit. So next is we're gonna fill it up with uh, oil. With this uh, new oil pan, it says add three extra quarts than what the factory does. I think factory is 13, so it'll say about 16. We're gonna get oil put in it. I'm gonna try to find El Dorado and see if our oil cap is there. We got the truck full of oil. We uh, pulled it out and checked to make sure that it was full on the dipstick. Once we crank it up, we'll shut it back off and recheck the oil. 
make sure we don't need to top off or see if it's still full. Before we start the truck, we're gonna have to prime the fuel system because we have let a bunch of fuel out with the filters being off. And you do not want to start this truck up dry because it could damage the fuel system. It probably will crank once you hit it, but it'll probably cut back off from getting air in it. You might not be so good. So we're gonna prime the fuel system using the, the fuel pump. So you're just gonna cycle the key on, let the fuel pump run. It'll run for a certain amount of time and then it'll turn off. Um, you should be able to hear it running and then once it turns off, you can turn the key back off, turn it back on, let it run. I would do that, I mean, just to be safe, I like to do it between five to 10 times or until I don't hear any sort of like bubbling um, coming from the lines. Leave the key on for 30 plus seconds or until you hear the fuel pump shut off and then turn it off and then do it again. Do that seven times or until you don't hear any more bubbling or this one is a push button. So with the push button, the brake has to be pushed in for the truck to start. Don't push the brake in, just hit the button. Once you hit the button, the fuel pump will uh, start running. And uh, you can hear it back there kind of choking uh, and gurgling from the air that it has in the system. It'll probably be worse on the first time and it'll slowly get better. We've hit the start button 10 times. Pretty quiet now. I can't hear anything other than it turning on and running, which tells me that full of fuel. So we're gonna go ahead and crank the truck up and we're gonna let it run for a few minutes to first cycle the oil throughout the system that we can then turn it off and check the oil and make sure the oil's still full and to push out any of the remaining air. Hopefully it's little to none with us priming it so it shouldn't shut off at all, but um, it will still have just a smidge in it. So we'll let it run through that at idle, push that out, cycle the oil, we'll turn it off, come back and we'll check the oil. So let's see if it starts. <laughs> We let the truck run for about a couple minutes uh, just to let everything circulate. The truck didn't turn off, it did fine, so uh, I think we primed our fuel system well. Now that we've had the truck running though, the oil has had time to circulate, fill up everywhere, all those nooks and crannies. We turned it off and we're gonna recheck the oil. Um, you wanna make sure that it's full or if you need to top off and add a little bit, this one's good to go. We're good on oil, but you, if you check it right away, um, it probably will show full, but definitely want to run it a little bit and then recheck it after a couple minutes because you know once the oil circulates and fills up other areas it may drop down and then once you're done there check over every spot that you went and make sure you have no leaks check both fuel filters uh, check at the oil make sure you don't have any leaks of anywhere where you work and then kind of give it another little glance over and make sure you don't see any other issues with the truck I have found one issue that is extremely bad for this truck and it's right this right here he's got dookie written on the front bumper which is a no-go. Um, this truck right here won't run right, so we're gonna get that off and we're gonna put a UNC Tar Heel one on there for him, get him back on the road, and he'll be running much better. All right, guys, so uh, that concludes our video. Appreciate everybody watching. Hope this helps you out. Hope you enjoyed watching. And uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe to videos, and see you guys next time.